OBS is about to have one of the most coolest updates it will ever have. One that I'm actually pretty excited for because it means you can do stuff like this. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Before we dive into it, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Ring. Ring is a series of high-end smart security doorbells that Harris? God? What are you doing on my doorstep? How'd you know I was here? And how'd you recognize me with my disguise? I've got the new ring doorbell. I'm literally looking at you right now. Yeah, I see it here. I'm glad you're finally taking home security seriously, but I didn't ring your doorbell. I know, I have motion detection turned on. I get alerts anytime weird mustachio dudes show up on my doorstep. First of all, this thing is fly. Second of all, why would you use motion detection? Doesn't it ping you every time a car drives by? No, you can set up motion zones in the app so it ignores all the cars. Huh, and then you can just talk to them like this? Uh-huh. Right through the uh, smartphone app? Yeah. Cool, wanna let me in then? <sighs> Ooh, sorry, my phone's about to die. Sorry, I can't let you in, bye. Oh, come on, man, I know you can still hear me. Well, for all you streamers out there looking to protect your home and all your fancy gear, make sure you go to ring.com slash alpha or click the link in the description below. Save $50 off the Ring Welcome Kit. You're welcome. So let's dive in and talk about this brand new version of OBS version 27 and a couple of reasons why I'm super excited for it. We are no longer gonna have to worry about messing up our scenes inside of OBS because you can undo if you screw up. Thank you. I know I've been personally excited about that one, but there are two more features that I'm even more excited about. And it's these two right here. Source transitions and track matte transitions. These two things are me pretty excited when I first saw them because it means we can do some really cool things inside of OBS that we've never been able to do before. Source transitions are pretty self-explanatory. They are transitions for each individual source in your OBS scene. By right-clicking, you can assign different transitions and then by toggling the layer on and off, you can actually preview what that transition will look like. So you can have things like slides or fade transitions for different parts of your overlay and then bring them in when you need them. You can even set up hotkeys to toggle things on and off for you to trigger the animations at the push of a button. But this is where it gets really interesting and something I'm super excited to test out and play with. You can actually make these stinger transitions as well. So you can bring different elements like your camera or your overlays or even metrics on your stream in via a stinger transition. Here is a very simple example of a fire element that I use to bring my camera in as if it's appearing in a ball of flames. You can even animate multiple elements like this and then assign those elements to a stream deck multi-action event and then bring things in on a delay so it looks completely automated. And then when you do that, it will look something like this. Now, at the time of testing this, this macro did break on me a couple of times, but I think it's because the version of OBS isn't fully released yet, and the Stream Deck app hasn't been updated to take advantage of the new functionality. So, fingers crossed that when everything is fully released, we'll have a completely smooth experience. But, there is one other big thing about this update that I am super excited about. Back in the day, some of you may remember, we made this awesome transition for Pokimane where it shows you the scene before and after the transition. It was super popular and Pokimane actually uses it from time to time on her stream, but it was made using some clever hack through the stream deck and OBS and using delays and multi-action events. In fact, it was that long ago and it's that complicated, I've actually forgotten how we originally did it. In fact, Harris, uh, do you remember how we did any of that stuff? Oh yeah, no, I don't even remember how we did that. That was super complicated. See what I mean? It was messy, it was a pain to set up, and it uh, had a tendency to break a lot of the time. But as of OBS version 27, you can do that kind of transition natively without the need for a stream deck. Inside of the Stinger Transition Properties box, you will now find a brand new checkbox that says Use Track Matte. What this will let you do is use an animated black and white image mask to mask your scene as your transition goes over it. So you're able to create something like this, where you can see the transition animate over the screen and you can see the scene before and after it. And you can even use these track mats on the Stinger transitions for source transitions as well. 
That's pretty dope. Now to those people who know what they're doing inside of After Effects or any other animation application, you probably will know how to do this and figure it out for yourselves. But for those of you out there that want to make a transition like this for your own channel and have no idea where to start, well, you're in luck. I will be doing a full tutorial on my own personal YouTube channel so you guys can check that out and make your own for free when the new version of OBS drops. I've left a link to my channel down in the description down below. Now, there are many different ways that you can utilize a transition like this on your own stream. For example, my classic TARDIS transition. I normally have it so the TARDIS animates down and as soon as the windows hit the screen, that is my cut point. But with this new track map transition, I'm able to make it so the TARDIS doors open and reveal the next scene inside of the TARDIS. It's nerdy, it's awesome, and I love it. And if you combine all of these things together, the track map transitions, the source transitions, as well as a stream deck multi-action event, you can make something that looks like this. And all of that was done with a single button on my stream deck using multi-action events and delaying the actions to time when the transitions take place. And that is only an example of the kind of things you can do with this. So to say I'm excited to see what you guys are going to come up with is, uh, is a huge understatement. I can see this really opening up doors for a lot of creatives on Twitch that use OBS to create some really awesome things. And if you have any ideas you want to share back and forth and get some feedback on, then feel free to jump into my Twitch chat. I'm live every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. The link for that is also down below. And if you guys want to see that tutorial I mentioned, make sure you subscribe to my own personal channel. The link for that is also down below. And as always, happy streaming. Do you know what else needs deleting? If you all say Brussels sprouts are bad, guess what else I say? You know what I say? Peanut butter? Overrated. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like it, do you? You don't like it when I when I come for your peanut butter.